What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel. We're online at www.whatsupinthesky.com. Come check out the website. We're starting to take off. Got our forums rocking and rolling. All sorts of good stuff going on there. Got a lot of Mars, uh, moon researchers putting their videos up. Very excited about it. And we're going to do a little space news. We haven't done this in a while. We're looking at space.com right now. I found three articles that you guys have sent over to me. One of them I think I stumbled upon. But uh, this one's been getting a lot of share. This was from Mike Wall, the senior editor or senior writer. Nearby alien planet may be capable of supporting life. As always, the links will be in the description. Um, i got to go get some teeth pulled tomorrow So in my back. So I'm not sure how many videos I'll be doing this weekend. But I've got so many picture videos to do. But I want to get back to the space news. Because I know a lot of you guys like this stuff. And a lot of this stuff, I breeze by. It. If you guys want to send it to me, I'd miss it too. So a newfound alien world might be able to support life. And it's just a stone's throw from Earth in the cosmic scheme of things. An international team of astronomers have discovered an exoplanet in the star Gliese 832's habitable zone. That's just <laughs> that's just right ranges of distances that could allow liquid water to exist on a world's surface. The planet, known as Gliese 832c, lies just 16 light years from Earth. For perspective, the Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years wide. The closest star to Earth, Proxima Centauria, is about 4.2 light years away. All right, so Gliese 832c is a super Earth, at least five times as massive as our planet, and it zips around its host star every 36 days. But that host star is a red dwarf that's much dimmer and cooler than our sun. So Gliese 832c receives about as much stellar energy as Earth does, despite orbiting much closer to apparent researchers said. See, that's what's interesting about this. I know these habitable zones that our scientists are putting on things, I think we're probably not, I honestly think we're not taking into a lot of different perspective. Um, you know, heat that could be coming from core, all sorts of things just in some of these planets. So I think there was a picture here. This was a, uh, here we go. The artist illustration compares the size of a potentially habitable exoplanet to that of Earth. So it's a little bit bigger, but it, maybe a new home one day for future humans. Who knows? Um, maybe it's a home now to something else. They, they get a little bit more into this in the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Um, basically, they say they're unclear how much Gliese 832 resembles Earth. Indeed, the discoverers think the newfound world may be more similar to scorching hot Venus. With a thick atmosphere, it has led to runaway greenhouse gas effects. Or greenhouse effects. Well, you know, either way, we're every time we're pointing our new telescopes out, every time we're looking for stuff, we're finding it. So very interesting, too. And once again, we've got, this is from space.com. Huge Earth-like planets that both continents and oceans may be better for harboring extraterrestrial life than those that are water-only worlds. A new study gives hope for the possibility that many super-Earth planets orbiting distant stars have exposed continents rather than just water-covered surfaces. Um, super-Earths likely have more stable climates than are compared to water worlds, and therefore larger habitable zones where alien life could thrive. In a new study, researchers used Earth as a standing point for modeling how super-Earths might store their water on the surface and deep underground within the mantle. The work is detailed in the paper, Water Cycling Between Ocean and Mantle, Super-Earths Need Not Be Water Worlds, that was published in January issue of the Astrophysical Journal. So this is another, I'm not going to read this whole one to you, this is kind of another interesting one here. It talks a little bit about it, how that... Uh, you know, the active tectonics and the you know the actual continents themselves, which kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? I don't know <laughs> how much uh, research went into coming up with that, but I would imagine that would be just as it'd be more Earth-like at least for what we know. And uh, not last but not least, this one's from Yahoo News. NASA detects odd X-ray signal 240 million or 240 million light years away. That's right, 240 million light years away. NASA detects an odd X-ray signal. There's never a dull moment or er, light year in outer space. NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and the European Space Agency's XMM Newton spotted an unusual X-ray signal in the data received from the Perseus the Perseus galaxy cluster some 240 million light years away. The signal appeared to be an intensity spike as an X-ray wavelength where none had been seen before. So what is it? It's a lovable 80s sitcom star Alf returning to Earth to provide us for more, four more seasons of his hit hilarious show and a possible star in a made-for-TV movie? Question mark. Yeah, that's some pun there, guys. 
Alas, probably not. The, the origin of the signal is not yet known. One of the possible explanations is that the scientists have pre-pumped up. The signal could have originated from a decay of a sterile neutrinos, particles that some experts are proposed are the source of dark matter. Dark matter is believed to make up 85% of the universe. However, because it doesn't emit or absorb light, it can't be seen or even proven to exist. So 85%, listen to this, this is what our science works on, ready? 85% of what we can't see, we can't prove, and what the whole, you know, 85% of what the universe is made of, we don't understand. Now, to me, that's just peanuts. I mean, we, we really know nothing in the scheme of things in the, in, in the universal terms. And it's wonderful that we have this type of information. We can all get together through the internet, through different websites, uh, and we can all piece the information together because surely it's not going to co- it's not going to come from the top down this type of info. We're going to have to each find it themselves. So keep sharing the space articles with me guys. You guys all rock. Much love to you. As always, check the description. The links will be below. My name is Will. What's up in the sky 37? And as always, check out the website www.whatsupinthesky.com. Hope you're having a good Thursday night. It's about midnight on Friday. Like I said, I'm getting some teeth pulled tomorrow, so I'm, I'm don't know how much I'll be talking. Much love, guys. Peace.